Hey guys, Vladox Studios here, and today we're going to go over Vivix Voice uh, Specialized Audio Voice Chat. Um, so today <laughs> is going to be a bit of a history lesson, but it's also going to focus on uh, later versions of the engine. So um, if you are familiar with UE4, uh, going back to UE422, Vivix was an integrated plugin. So if you go to the default engine plugins list, you type in Vivix, it would show up there. Um, that is still the case today. However, the back end um, is no longer supported for Vivix integration. That would be technically their V4 of Vivix um, or integration version. They deprecated it, sent out some stuff, uh, I think two years ago. Um, and if you're not in production, it's no longer supported. Um, so they have Vivix V5 or what they call Vivix Core. Um, and Unity has acquired Vivix. Uh, so they're migrating everything over to the Unity admin portal. You would come into your projects, you would set up a new project. And the reason I'm doing this is because drop in is a V like an Unreal Engine 424 application and was running on the V4 version of Vivix. And since it's deprecated and we were in sandbox, I needed a way to migrate to V5. Um, so just hang with me for a second and I'll explain uh, the creation of a subsystem plugin that I wrote that makes non C++ projects really easy to integrate V5 of the Vivix core. Um, so, you know, older, Unreal Engine 4 applications can utilize this for, you know, the v newer v Vivix backend. Um, and then Unreal Engine 5 Plus projects can utilize this as well and expand upon it if they want to in C++ or just drop it in to a non-C++ blueprint based project. So um, what you would do is create your project here. So no longer using Vivix dashboard that's going bye bye or what they call the Vivix developer portal. It is now Unity admin portal. You would create a project, make sure you have it selected, and then you would go to gaming services and under multiplayer, you will see this voice and text chat, uh, chat section. You would go to the setup guide. We'll reset this so it can look the way that you would see. Um, at this point, you would pick Unreal, and this is where the confusion starts and partially the reason why I did the subsystem. Um, you would hit next here and it's gonna say, hey, you can download the SDK. But again, this is a little uh, confusing and complicated. Um, if you were developing for one of these platforms, you would have platform macros, people on, you know, that are doing that are familiar with that. Um, otherwise, you would be developing for Windows, um, even though it's, you know, Unreal Engine, your deployment target is still Win64. Um, this top link is going to be the SDK only. The second link is going to be a pre-compiled example project with it integrated so you can test. The third is going to be the source of the integrated C++ project, um, which is what I utilized to write the Wildox Studios subsystem so that I knew I was implementing the subsystem correctly against Vivix Core. Long story short, you just need the top version of this if you're gonna download it directly to live alongside the Wildox Vivix subsystem. Um, so uh, I've pre-downloaded this. Uh, so we'll just go to downloads real quick so I can show you that. So here I've clicked that top link. It looks like this. Uh, it's gonna give you a folder called Vivix Core and this is what would live inside of your plugins directory. Um, we'll go to the example project that I made. It's essentially just a blank 424 project. Um, again, ignore the versioning here. It says the minimum engine version is 426, but that is not correct either. Um, as you'll see, I have it implemented in 424. So anyway, <laughs> uh, on to the confusing here. I, I have been told by Unity they have a dedicated team now that is going to try to update their documentation and get things more in line with um, kind of 
hammering out some of this confusion that's caused by that recommendation. Um, but anyway, purpose of this video is to show how easy this can be and also talk about a subsystem that you can slide it right on in alongside this uh, SDK and get going really fast. So we'll open this test project up. Um, as you can see, it's 424.3, which loves to launch uh, SteamVR alongside it because it's enabled by default. Um, so if we go into the plugin section here and I look at my installed plugins, you'll see I have this Vivic subsystem by Wildox Studios. Um, and this is essentially going to live in the plugins folder right alongside the Vivix core that you download from them. Um, in here, you'll see that there is a dependency on Vivix core. So it needs that to actually utilize the Vivix V5 course uh, SDK. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. You slide them both in here. As you can see, this is their version 521. Again, ignore their V5 stuff. But this is what you have to run in Unreal Engine 4 and 5 now. The old stuff, this thing here, if you go here and you type in Vivix, this is no longer functional. The voice chat interface for Vivix is deprecated, back end is shut down. Um, Unity now has Vivix core and that is the only path forward no matter if you're on UE4 or UE5. So now that that's out of the way, we can go talk about the configuration section. So if you go to project settings, inside of the Vivix subsystem, you'll see that I've added this nice little section here um, with an ability to enable or disable the subsystem. Um, and you can also pull your credentials over. So if we open this back up, right, once we've downloaded this, um, we'll go back to overview and then your credentials section should be populated. So all I've done is copy and paste from the credentials section literally into the Vivix subsystem plugin that I've made, which makes this extremely easy to integrate. Uh, once you've done that, if you go to the Vivix subsystem content and to get there, you just enable the plugin content. Um, and if you care about C++, you can show these classes, but then you load this test level. You should see uh, the game mode, the testing game mode is the default game mode for this level. And the Vivix player controller is the default player controller. That is the only two things um, that change really from a standard project. And the game mode is essentially there just for me to store this Vivix player controller reference because that's what integrates everything in the subsystem. The testing actor is just here to show you examples of how to reference um, your credentials, your session ID, your functions, your bound events. Um, it's just here to kind of give you quick access to what the subsystem is and how to get things out of it. The player controller is already set up for you as long as you've entered in the credentials correctly on the configuration section and project settings. Um, this player controller will then work. So on begin play, it's gonna say, hey, if I'm the server, store reference to this replicated variable session ID that the Vivix subsystem generates for you. If you're a client on rep notification or rep notify, you're gonna check that session ID, make sure it's not blank and make sure it doesn't equal the client session, meaning you've already logged in. Um, and then it's gonna try to log in. It's also gonna bind the join Vivix voice channel on a delegate that only happens after a login is successful. And then it's also going to bind a network error event here, which both of these are right here. They're not very complicated. Handle network error is going to leave the voice and log you out. Leave voice channels and log you out. Join Vivix channel is going to leave voice channels because every time you attempt to join one, you want to make sure you're not in any. And then it's going to try join passing in positional as the default type. And negative one is a team, meaning it's global. Anything greater than negative one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc., cetera, uh, is exactly what it looks like. It means you'll be in a specific channel. Um, the bound events that are here for this uh, network handle network error, you do have an option if you want to implement your own game instance, you can rely on those event shutdown and event network error calls. 
all I did in the subsystem is basically reach out to the same thing that the game instance handles and I bound a delegate to the same event. So then I allow you to bind from the player controller. So you don't have to implement it, it's optional, but if you do, just go unpin it from the bind section uh, here so that you don't fire them off twice. That's the only little thing here. As it currently stands, you can hit play. You'll see a nice little message that says I'm, sub I'm initialized and I've joined positional channel. Gives you a nice little output here for uh, your event and the player name, etc. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, you'll then see the stats on your overview pop up. It takes a little bit, it's not instant, but you'll see data start coming in to your project um, as you've you know logged in and joined channels. It is that simple. Um, again, the reason I did this was so that I could go back and support all versions of UE4 that supported subsystems and that you didn't have to integrate or implement anything in C++, this can be done in a blueprint only project. As long as Unreal Header Tool can, you know, uh, migrate the project for you, um, it can actually keep going up. So for example, um, if we wanted to do a UE5 project and utilize the same uh, framework here, we could go to, U uh, let me exit out of this real quick. We could go to the launcher. Go to Unreal Engine. Uh, we could launch Unreal Engine 5.1. We could go to games. We could pick a blank project. I'll just pick E drive here, select the folder. I'm going to name this um, Vivix test five underscore one create. As you can see, it's a blueprint project. It is open now. I'm going to go ahead and close it. Going to come over to this UE424 project. I'm going to copy both of these. Create a new plugins folder. Paste them in here. Double click this. It's going to say, hey, these two modules are built for another engine version. Do you want to rebuild them now? And this is Unreal Header Tool. Um, so as long as you've done the necessary requirements for prerequisites for running Unreal Header Tool, you can hit yes here. Um, it's rebuilding binaries and intermediates. It's doing that for both the plugin and the project. Um, could do a better job of telling you that it's working on stuff with the C++ compiler. Uh, there should be like a worker process listed or a C++ compilation process listed. There it is. Um, so I'm gonna pause this. I don't know how long it's gonna take. It shouldn't take that long though. Um, but I'm not gonna make you wait on this. Oh, never mind. It already <laughs> it already came up. Um, so yeah, once that is done compiling, it's gonna attempt to load the application, which you can see here. Um, it is open now. If we go into plugins, you'll see that both of the plugins are enabled and installed. Um, if we then go to the plugins listed content, double click the test level, same thing. Uh, all of the stuff is here. 
we go to project settings and we check the Vivix subsystem configuration, you'll see that it's blank. Um, this is expected because this information lives in your engine config I and I, right? So if you hit play right now, I've ha I've handled these errors. I'm like, hey, your credentials are blank. Um, I can't log in and I can't join a channel. So uh, at this point, you would just come out to your credentials section, you know, section of your project. Um, we'll go copy these to the clipboard and we'll, we'll in first enable it and we'll start putting these things in. I don't need to generate a new one. Copy this token. All right, so this is here. And then whenever you hit play, you'll see Vivix subsystem initialized and we join the positional channel. And if we go look at the output log, we are good. We are now connected to the channel. Um, so that's it. Um, I should have this available uh, to all of my plugins slash tools Patreon members uh, relatively soon. I am in communication with Unity um, to understand, uh, you know, their presence on the Unreal Engine marketplace. As soon as I hear anything back from those guys, um, I will do my best to offer the subsystem to the marketplace so that, you know, Blueprint, Indies, uh, non-C++, like, you know, non-junior, senior level uh, C++ coders would be able to you know, integrate this into their application and, you know, kind of move forward with it. Um, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks to everyone who subscribes to Wildox Studios Patreon and um, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Later.